Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. Over the last couple days we've had quite a few quality of life buffs and nerfs as well as some updates. Just some minor things I'm going to go over. Now while these are pretty minor updates, they actually have a pretty large impact on some aspects of RuneScape. Not to mention that there is now a temporary Iron Man mode that you go through before you can become a permanent Iron Man. Dragon Hunter crossbow buffs as well as now the Ethereum bracelet now can absorb ether on the ground as opposed to picking it up which is great. Anyway, hope you enjoy and let's get started. So on January 11th, we had a quality of life update. I do think Jagex should focus a bit more on updates like this. Quality of life, just making nice changes, balance changes, and stuff like that should be more often than not over the uh, major updates, but that's just my opinion. So to start off here, now able to fight Galvec. Uh, he was the final boss in the Dragon Slayer 2 quest. However, before now, you could not fight him again. You could only fight Vorkath. They've now added a little dream pool here, which I feel like doesn't feel super old school, but whatever. That will allow you to refight Galvec as well as re-watch any of the cutscenes in Dragon Slayer 2. I think this is a nice uh, quality of life change. However, it would have been nice if there was more of a purpose behind killing Galvec again. If you had drops of some sort or one suggestion on Reddit is that Vorkath would drop uh, some item that would allow you to fight Vorkath. And Vorkath would then have very good drops like Skatizo, maybe you'd drop a clue scroll 100% or just something like that. So now there has actually been a change to Iron Man mode which doesn't happen very frequently. What they are doing is they're removing the option for new accounts to become a permanent Iron Man until they reach a skill level 1000. Now I do kind of understand the reasoning behind this. Uh, they probably get tons of requests on the daily to remove an Iron Man status from accounts which probably gets annoying and a thousand skill total really isn't too high of a requirement. So I'm assuming the way this will work is before 1000 total level you'll just be able to, on your own, remove your Iron Man status if you choose. However, right, you won't be able to go back to an Iron Man after. After 1000 total level, you'll have to go through a Jagex Moderator or someone like that to get your Iron Man status revoked. I do see this as a minor issue for some people who are too easily dissuaded from a challenge. Like, your first 1000 total skill level is kind of important, and I feel like, personally, it could be very tempting to remove it from your account once you come up to an early game challenge. So I do understand why they're doing it, but I can see it having a negative effect on some players. You can now talk to Ignisia, found in the Winter Todd camp, to trade in empty tomes of fire for 100 burnt pages per tome. It's always kind of nice to have an item sink in here, so I don't really have an issue with this. You can now paint Heraldic Adamant. Cool. And one actual really awesome change is to the Bracelet of Ethereum. One thing I've always had an issue with is... When you're going into the Revenant Caves, you don't want to bring a ton of ether with you because you lose it when you die, so you never want to bring more than like 100. Now they've added an option to the bracelet to toggle absorption, and I've tried this, and it just goes right into the bracelet once it drops in the ground. A really nice quality of life buff. And as long as you're killing the monsters relatively quickly, you're never going to run out of protection because killing the monsters are going to drop enough ether for you to continue fighting them. One big bug from this week is that if a Picare had damaged you below half and uh, then you went to go kill Vorkath or apparently even the Grotesque Guardian, uh, you would actually lose uh, your equipment because the Picare would have credit for the kill. This has now been fixed, which is good. So now we're on to the January 12th post. Now this is actually a dev blog and poll questions for the next week. So first up, I'm excited to see that they are going to be uh, releasing some Fossil Island improvements soon because while Fossil Island does have a few key things that are worth doing, it has a lot of daddy content and things you're just not going to do, as well as the Barbarian Assault ranged rework, which they have mentioned quite a while ago now, but I guess it'll be coming in February. And they're saying that February will be a whole month dedicated to QOL, which I am happy to see. So first up, they're actually going to be making some changes to a lot of the Dragon Slayer 2 item drops. Notably, the Dragon Bow Necklace is getting a plus 6 prayer boost over where it was before. They're also changing the mechanics on it a bit. Currently, when you equip it, you lose 50% of your prayer. That's to stop you from kind of hot swapping into it to get the prayer boost and the prayer restore. What they want to change it to is just it prevents you from getting prayer restoration until the necklace has been equipped for 15 seconds. I really actually do like these changes. I think this is going to make the necklace a lot more viable. Currently, it's only really useful in like one or two spots. Now, it'll still be a niche item, but hopefully it'll have a bit more uses. Next up, they're buffing the Dragonfire Ward. Uh, not a huge buff by any means, but they are increasing the defensive stats of it a bit. I'm not sure if this is going to make it any more viable, but it helps. Now one change I'm kind of confused about is the super anti-fire potions. The only thing they are changing about the super anti-fire potion is that um, they are adding an option to make an extended super anti-fire potion. Because right now it only lasts for 2 minutes. They're going to pull to add a 98 herbal requirement to make it last for 3 minutes I believe. I thought most of the community thought that these were overpowered and kind of made a couple items pointless to use. So I'm not really sure why that is the route they're taking here. 
I don't think this will pass a poll, so whatever. And one buff a lot of people in the community have been fighting for is a buff to the Dragon Hunter crossbow. Right now the uh, accuracy and damage is only increased by 10% when fighting dragons, but they're going to change it to hopefully is 30%. This will hopefully make it the best in slot weapon for killing dragons as it should have been to begin with. And hopefully it'll overshadow the blowpipe at places like Vorkath and wyverns and stuff like that. And also they are currently looking at making the dragon full helm and other dragon pieces have a lighter spike. The most important update here, but the one on the left definitely looks better. Anyway guys, what do you think? Do you like these quality of life changes? Do you think they should be focusing on stuff like this? What do you think about the buffs? I do like the dragon hunter crossbow buff, don't like this one so much, and dragon fire ward probably could use something else, and a dragon bone necklace. Um, I should have bought one at 4 mil. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, don't forget to leave the video a like, and I will see you in the next one.